Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. I'm your host, Chris Granger. Let's get into it for today. So it has been a while, you guys, since we had an episode come out. I'm so excited to be back with you. We have a little bit of a new format, so we're not going to do quite as many interviews that we've done in the past. Our focus and our goal with Eco Ask Why Now is to serve you with the information that you need the most, particularly around industrial automation, power, control, whatever those needs are. So we're going to be diving deep into topics and and dropping those out for you guys. We're going to have a lot of supporting information that comes along with it along the way. And I'm just excited to be back with you. The 250 episodes that we did, that's right, 250 episodes that we've already put out for EcoSY has been a true blessing for me just to be able to meet people across the industries, hear their stories, and be able to share them with you What a just just what an amazing ride it has been. So I'm hoping that you're going to like the new format. I'd love to get your feedback. Again, you can uh, connect with us directly. Go to the show notes. We'll have ways that you can connect with us uh, with for more information there. Okay. so we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be diving into how you can maximize your efficiency and overall success with installed base evaluations. Now, you may be new to installed base evaluations, and that's okay. This is That's what we're here for. Or if that's, that's something that you're familiar with, we may be able to give you some insight here with this particular episode that will help you make the most out of your installed base evaluation. Because we know that in today's fast-paced industrial landscape, it's so easy for things to get just lost in the shovel. There's, let's just be real. There's things that are moving in that are moving out of plants all the time, right? And equipment, they, every day it does what? It gets older. We have people that turn over in the plants all the time. And then when you have new installs, we all see those. Those new projects are happening all around us. They, they leave us with some questions like, how did that get there? Like, how does this even happen? When, when did we get this equipment? And this is where an IBE can come in and change the game because it can be a critical tool as you actually start uh, implementing and moving forward for regaining control, for prioritizing those investments that you want to make. And it's going to help you set the stage for future success. So now we're going to have a lot of different IBEs that we're going to be talking about too. We're going to be, we're going to be diving into the essence of what an IBE is and the types of uh, types of IBEs that are available. And we're also going to look about how you can get started and the multifaceted benefits that an installed base evaluation offer. Okay. So now let's 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 kind of start slow. Let's understand the essence of what an IBE is. Okay. Because at the core of it, the IBE is basically knowing what you own. That's it. It's just knowing what you own. It gives you that detailed list of an inventory that is specific to your assets. And it's kind of like a blueprint. You know, when you you open up a blueprint for a building, you can see everything that's just laid out. You can say, okay, this is over here. This is this this section of the plant. Over here we have, maybe maybe this is finishing or dry in, whatever it may be. But it gives you that. It's kind of like a guiding light, a starting point, because we know that you're working towards operational optimization. We know that every plant that's out there, every manufacturer that's out there, you're trying to optimize your processes. Why? Because you you know the competition is out there. It's coming. It's coming hard. So now, to get ahead of the competition, you need to understand where you're at, and that begins with a single step. This IBE, the IBE, is that pivotal initial stride you need to take towards a modernization project, towards any major improvements. But before you spend any capital, you need to have it. So just picture this. Let's sit back. Let's say you're inside your your your, your office right now in your industrial manufacturing facility, and you have a, a way to know without a shadow of a doubt all your encompassing inventory of your assets, as well as like a comprehensive map to show you what's in place And what do you need to start paying attention to or planning for in the future? Okay. This is foundational knowledge right here, y'all. You all, this is it. And it's going to help you uh, strategize effectively and start putting into priority 
action where it's needed most and where it's going to give you the biggest lift because you don't want to spend money just for the sake of spending money. No, everyone, their budgets are tight. So you need to know where to take the action, where you have the most risk and what's going to give you the biggest turnaround, right? So now that IBE is about helping you identify that. That's really what it's about. And also minimizing your threats. So when you do that, when you start minimizing those threats and you identifying those opportunities, what you're doing is you're streamlining your path. We all know that we need help getting to the next stage, particularly in manufacturing these days, right? There are so many things that you cannot, uh, you know, take, a, take action on, but where do you need to focus most? This is where the IBE will help you. It will help. It will actually give you a, a baseline to, okay, this is a big, big project. However, based on the data, it says, I need to act here. And when you know that, and you can say uh, concretely that, you know what? The best use of our resources, of our time, of our energy, of our money is here. It's just going to put you on so much a better path for success. Now, there's different types of install based evaluations that we need to kind of talk about and let you let, that you need to consider because each of them is going to be tailored to your different objectives and your needs. So you got big equipment manufacturers, you got your Rockwell Automations, you have your Eatons of the world. And they conduct extensive IBEs. They get, and they can really get down to, to the component level. And that's going to help you understand directly whether your power or your automation infrastructure, what do you have installed? Okay. And they can, they get, even, they can even get down to like power audits and, um, you know, different ways to, to, to understand how the power flow and the, the synchronization within your plant because of power system all the way to the load. These are components that you need to have awareness of. And you need to have evaluated. You need to understand, okay, where am I at risk with these? And, 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 and taking intentional action here, I'm telling you, it's going to set you head and shoulders above the competition. Then you even have distributors like Eco and other distributors out there. We can, they can do IBE services as well, typically with a more focused scope. And that's, a, that's the really cool part about working with a distributor like, like an electrical equipment company. Because when you select that IBE provider, you, your choice should align with your objectives and your scope, right? So think about this as you're working with an electrical, uh, electrical distributor like Eco. You may want to target like a particular system or even a subsystem or a group of systems. Maybe you want to actually just understand, hey, I want to have a good understanding of all my PLC cabinets. I just need to know what's in those cabinets, right? Or you may want to say, hey, this section of the plant, I need a re very, very fundamental and, and detailed understanding of the electrical in infrastructure that exists. Insert the IBE, because that's it. You get to define what's important. You get to define what you focus on. You get to say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about these, these assets over here, because if they go down, it, will it be a headache? Yeah, but it's not the end of the world. However, these assets over here and this section of the plant, I have to focus and I need to know where am I at risk and where do we need to make improvements? And that is it. That is that is the biggest thing for right there. When you start understanding the different types of IBEs, that's going to help you make that determination on where to focus. So let's think about that for a second. Where do you even start? You have to you have to really get narrowed in on that focus, right? If you have a scope out there, like a scope that's on a rifle, you better dial that thing in so you can see exactly what you're aiming for. And so the, a practice that's often uh, missed, and I think about this a lot from the, from the manufacturers we worked with in the past, is you don't want to tackle everything at once, right? Because it can be so much more effective if you start with smaller subsets or areas of your plant that you want to focus on. It's the, it's the old, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You don't just attack the whole thing at once, right? So maybe you think about them as asset zones or focus areas or whatever you want to call. But think of how, what are the places inside your facility that you can focus on right now that's going to yield quick and impactful results? That's the difference, the impactful results. For example, maybe you're struggling with VFD failures, right? And that's constantly happening. You're having VFD failures and you, you need to, Understand, okay, why are these VFDs failing? Well, maybe you want to actually go through and start conducting some, some data around the VFDs that you have in the particular areas of the, of the facility that are causing you problems. If you had that data, then you can start working with your vendors and your manufacturers to ultimately get down to the root cause of what's going on. 
It all starts with understanding the data. Similarly, maybe you had a, maybe you're having network issues and you need to have a network assessment. That's essentially an IBE for your networks. And that can address maybe some connectivity issues that you're having in the plant. So regardless of where you choose to focus at with an IBE, it can it really focus down to I uh, have a list of factors here I want you to think about. Assessment of risk. Okay? Assessment of risk due to obsolescence failure. So you need to understand right out the gate what equipment do you have installed that potentially is at risk for failure due to obsolescence, right? Because if, it, if you can't get it, then you better have a backup plan. You better have a plan B and a plan C. So really think about that because if that risk, if that, th if that fails and you can't go to eBay and you can't find it in, a, in one of your uh, 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 sister plants or anything like that, what are you going to do? Then you also need to think about the condition of your assets. Really, think about thermal rise and enclosures. How much heat are these are these are these assets seeing? Environmental protections are they are they exposed to elements? Do they have things within your facility that could be impacting the overall physical operation condition of them? Because all that stuff, all that stuff impacts run life. And if you start messing around with, and start throwing different factors at these that these components that they weren't designed for, you're not going to have the, the run life that you should have. So you need to know that. You need to know that so you can evaluate that risk. Then you need to think about asset protection. Okay. Think about things like short circuit protection, overload management, coordination. You need to have all these understandings to know, you know what, do I have everything in place that I need to ensure that my asset is protected to the, to the maximum visibility? And then maybe for your lower risk assets, you don't worry about that. But your higher items, your higher dollar items, the harder to find items, you better make sure you have all those components in place because you're trying to, to prevent that, oh man, what do I do now moment? You don't want that, right? You need to understand that. Now, criticality assessments. That's another com core component of an IBE is you need to determine the, criti the criticality of the assets themselves. And then you need to say, OK, based off these assets, these are the ones I got to focus on the most versus these. I can I can back off, you know, to let off the gas again. Criticality, assessment of that protection, all these things run together. Now, what about identifying functional improvement opportunities? So just think about this. If you had if you had a way to have that vision of your facility and you can see right up front, OK, here is my, my my immediate low hanging fruit. I know I can make an improvement right here. If I just focus right here on in this area for this line, for this particular uh, part of the production, I know I can get a return. Hey, and IBE is going to help you do that. It's going to spot you those areas where immediate enhancements can make a big uh, uh, improvement. That's it. Also, surplus, obsolete inventory. How about you start eliminating that stuff that you have in your storeroom and in, in, your, in your warehouse that you never need because you were storing it for something that you had installed 30 years ago. And guess what? It's not in the plan anymore. It's a great way where you can clean up things and start identifying that surplus. You may even be able to get some money for that surplus and get that stuff out. And I'm going to tell you, you know, you know what I'm talking about, a clean storeroom. Uh, it's so much peace about that, right? Is it versus going into a storeroom or going into your spare parts area and it looks like chaos. IBEs help you just get a ground, get it, get set and, and be able to actually move forward with your knowing with confidence, knowing what you have in your plan. Now, how about gaps and critical spares? Think about this for a second. OK, you have this cri this p critical piece of equipment. And you just know, without a shadow of a doubt, that that spare is in that warehouse. Well, guess what? On third shift, three years ago, that piece of equipment failed. And that spare that you thought was there is actually installed. And it never got replenished. Now, does that happen? Yes. Is it intentional? No. Mistakes happen. Manufacturing things are happening all the time. Assets that they, they go out, sometimes they don't get replenished the right way. So identifying that gap in a critical spare, that is so crucial. Right there, an, a, an IVE can help you save that, that headache moment to where you got to go get extra leave. You're going to have to get extra Pepto-Bismol because you're going to be in a stack of meetings. They go over and over and over because this piece of equipment failed. You don't have a, a replacement. Why? You don't want that. Let the IVE help you. Now, how about the last piece, maybe th to really think about, money doesn't grow on trees. We know that. So you have to prioritize that capital 
and you need to prioritize your resources around that capital, right? So making sure that you're rationalizing those resources allocation based on the data, that changes everything. It's not just a gut reaction. Hey, we need to go work on line one because line one uh, is giving us the, the biggest return. No, you can actually say, you know what? We need to focus on this area of line one because the data shows us that we are volatile down and right here from point A to point B. And if we were going to put some capital to make the most improvement to our overall process, that's where we need to spend the money. And you know what? The IBE helps you do that directly. It gives you information so that you can say, oh, Right here. So the actual spend is not, you know, this, you know, X times two. It's actually X, right? You, you can actually, you can get down to more granular detail because it's not just about gathering data. Don't, that's the big mis, misunderstanding about an IBE. It's about leveraging data. That's the difference. It's not about just gathering. You got to leverage that data because then it's going to help you steer to your monetization journey. That's going to help you make better decisions. Right. A blueprint. It's going to guide your actions. We've talked about this already. So if you're going to spend time and effort and money upgrading and, and, and working inside your plant to make the, the, the most effective manufacturing facility out there, you better have a good plan because people are going to have ideas. Let's just be real. Everybody out in a plant has ideas and they these ideas aren't bad. But if you are, if they are data driven, that changes it. That changes the game. So now let's 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 move forward. Let's say that you've actually focused in on your IBE. You got your IBE vendor selected that you brought them in. You've done an IBE. You know, you've gone through all the process of collecting the data on site. They've gone back through and they've actually done uh, the, the, the data analysis for you with an IBE because that should be your expectation. You should be able to expect a vendor to come in, collect data on, on maybe a, on a period of a couple of days, depending on the size of the IBE. Some of the IBEs can be done in a couple of hours, but then they have to go back. And this is where the rubber meets the road. They're going to perform that analysis on what they collected. So here's what we collected. Here's your cross references. Here's your gaps. Here's your opportunities. Here's the identified things that we see as, as risk areas. And then you're going to have all this stuff that comes back at you. So now, knowing that we're not just collecting information, right? We're, we're, we're planning. We're, we're, we're planning for strategic modernization. I want you to consider these steps. Just lay, just lay them out very simple for you. Step number one. This may sound a little silly, but I, I, I put this here for a reason. Trust, but verify, right? Trust, but verify. I love that, that old saying where, where you, you need to understand for yourself that, that IBE, IBE data, that's a valuable resource. I completely get the importance of it, but cross check. I'm not saying you have to go through the whole thing, but cross check for accuracy. Maybe go look at one of the most important areas for you and just, just do a quick, uh, a quick, uh, cross check to make sure that there's not an oversight there. Because let's just face it, oversights can occur. When you're going through a facility and you're collecting that much data, things just happen. But just check it because it's critical. Hey, I feel a whole lot better if I've checked five items in this area and everything aligns. I'm going to feel pretty good about that moving forward and say that there's there's no discrepancy. This looks good. And it's just a good practice, right? Don't just take things at, at face value. Spend some time to understand what the data is telling you and that it's there because then that's going to change everything about how you approach stuff moving forward. Now, once you've done that, you've trusted, you've verified, you got your arm around your buddy, you're feeling good about your suppliers who's working with you. Now I want you to think about your monetization goals. OK, because, again, it's going to help you the IBE specifically help you with those prioritizations around upgrades. And there's usually going to be some impl implications around capital planning. And that typically is over not just a short time frame. Right. You got to figure out what does the capital look at look like for the next one, two, three, five years. So to do this, if you couple that capital planning around the data and combine it with a smart tech review. Oh, you're going to be able to pick, to pick some devices and some projects that are going to be well ahead, well ahead of, of where you are right now. And it's going to help you develop that progression plan. And that progression plan, typically, that spans multiple years, okay, because you're not just going to do this stuff overnight. You can't just snap your fingers and it's done. Things take time. So you need to start defining standards. You need to talk about device replacements. You need to talk about big projects that are coming and incremental uh, items and when they pop up, hey, how can I take advantage of it with this piece of equipment 
you know, happens to just fail, what can we do in the, in the meantime to actually start making incremental improvements? You'll see all that. And smart device standards that are out there, they're going to help you with that progression planning. And this is this is something that you really need to take serious, okay? Because we have actually defined a smart manufacturing guide, and we we help lay that lay that out for our customers. And by the way, check out the show notes. We'll have a a link to our smart manufacturing guide, because we'll give you some examples of when we say a a device standard. What does that look like? Because it needs to be requirements defined by you around your objectives and your goals. What's going to really move the needle for you, right? Before you just jump in and, and just pick that next family of devices that you just happen to, to come across, hey, let's make sure that they, they have the connectivity that you need. Let's make sure it's going to give you the data that you need. Let's make sure that that, that your your staff, that your, your team can actually support that technology. This is very important. A couple of ways you can maybe get started with this is you got to think holistically, right? From the site level objectives and across all your information systems, because we know all these systems are being tied together now, you need to actually think about uh, personnel, not just engineering personnel, but think about operations, ERP, the, le- the the users that are working in the plant. You need to think holistically when it comes to making decisions like this. And then think from a machine or process perspective, right? This is kind of going to get where you need to get specific with your with your engineering, your control group, your e and teams to really get down to that level. And then you start big, but you work back. Work backwards. I had someone on our on our pre on Eco Ask Why say one time, think big, act small. It's a great practice, particularly around your IBE. Think big. It's great to have those big, hairy, audacious goals, right? Those BHAGs. But take smaller steps. And if you do those small steps, you're just gonna it's gonna really put you on a much better path moving forward. And Use creative thinking. The, those types of exercises, and when you combine that stuff with IBE data, smart tech reviews, and things like that, it's going to help you just be, get so clear on where you need to, to act moving forward. And then you can start, okay, you've done that smart tech review. You have that little bit of a plan. All right, start identifying those gaps and start prioritizing. Because what you want, the secret sauce in helping IBEs be successful to help you with your plans for modernization is get some quick wins. You need some quick wins. Address those immediate concerns. Go ahead and attack those out the gate. Obsolete obsolete equipment, critical spare shortages, things like that, you should just jump all over. I mean, just absolutely hang on the rim with this stuff because that's what that's going to do. It's going to help you build trust. Your organizations all of a sudden start looking at you like, oh, go. They really got it figured out. They are ahead of this thing. And you're going to show right there, well, hey, I, it's, I was able to figure this out because we made the investment here. And I, because I've been able to identify the, the areas we, that we need to focus on, we just we, we took action. And it may lead you to future IVE projects for bigger areas of the plant, addressing larger gaps. But start small. Don't forget the opportunity to, to, to gain advocates when you win. People like to hang out with, with people who win. Trust me, they just do. Look at all the bandwagons that are out there. So find those immediate gaps. Prioritize them, okay? Now, we already talked a little bit about your, when we were doing the, the planning goals around a smart tech review. So what a smart tech review is, really, when you get down to it, it's just a great inter, uh, intermediate step that you can take before you start just replacing stuff, okay? So with the IBE, can, that could be a good reference for you. But before you start just pulling stuff out and throwing stuff in, you probably want to understand what it does. So this is a great way to get some inspiration, too. Okay, we've been doing it this way since forever. What is new that's out there that we could try when this fails? Hey, here we come now. Let's get to that smart tech review and that device planning. And you can get your vendor community involved. And when you start working with vendors, which is highly encouraged, particularly like for vendors like Electrical Equipment Company, hey, we would definitely want to work with you. Share some data. Maybe the vendor directly didn't do the IBE. Maybe someone else did. Share the data. It's okay. Request recommendations. You know what? Here's what the data shows me. I'd like to see your recommendations. And by the way, since... When you, when you send me that, I want to see a demo, okay? And then get specific with the demo because vendors can come in and they can be just a straight-up commercial, like the old, old TV info commercials, right? Stop that stuff. Make sure you need to, 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 to determine for them directly, hey, I need you to demonstrate right now for me the functional performance of this item, 
what data is available that actually matters to me and what's the diagnostics available that I, that, that I can plug into my system to get me the information that I need. Because it's great if this new piece of smart technology has 500 data points. Guess what? If it doesn't have the three that you need and that you can tie back into and actually make better informed decisions, it's just junk. It's, it's garbage in, garbage out. So you need an explicit demonstration, okay? And you need to see, don't miss this, the integration component. You need to see that this, this equipment is integrated into your control system, whatever that system may be. You need to think about the connectivity of it, okay? The programming, right? And the maintenance. Because if you've installed new equipment into your facility, you're going to have to have it. It's got to connect first and foremost. Then you got to know how to get it plugged in and working with your process. And then don't forget the maintenance component. Because once it's installed and whoever walks away, walks away. If they're in your, if they work for you inside the facility, that's great. You still have that resource. But if they're an outside vendor, hey, you're kind of a little bit at a, at a risk point right there. Now, maybe for this piece of equipment, that's okay. You're at a risk point, but you need to make sure you have a good understanding for maintenance of that equipment. Okay. So if you had a little advanced notice and a little planning and that, te- that demo where it's getting very specific, Hey, these are going to really help you make the best decisions moving forward for not only for your process, but for you, you want to lower your stress level too. IBEs can do that. Now, as you start moving forward, you're planning your progression for modernization. You need to think, really think through those device standards. Really think through it. Make sure that that that, that uh, everything that you're that you're standardizing on supports the technology that you want to have in your plan. And start thinking not just you know right now the next quarter. Start thinking in the next two to three years. Think further down the road. And if you need help with device level planning, there are templates out there. Okay. Again, go to our smart manufacturing guide. We'll have that link in the show notes for you all listening. Go to that if you need help. But the smart, but but outside of that, if we are ready, particularly an electric equipment company, to help you in those areas. So if you need help with the progression planning with your device standards, this is a great area for us. We have a lot of experts that are ready to help, to jump in. And that kind of leads us down to the next point: collaboration and expertise. You have to collaborate with, with industry experts out there. Now, there's a ton of information on the Internet, but at some point, you should probably seek the advice and actually start thinking directly more on the innovative solutions that are out there from them directly. Ask them for case studies. All right, this is great technology. I, I love the advancement that I'm seeing here, but can you show me directly how this has worked in a facility similar to ours? Can you give me a demo that maybe even I don't want I don't have time to come into your to your site. Maybe can you give me a virtual demo? Show me how the software is configured so that I can actually connect this into my Rockwell automation platform or to my to my Eaton or my Siemens platform for power management, whatever it may be. Seek that expertise. It's out there. You just have to take the time to look for it. And I'm telling you, with the, with the advancements in technologies, there's so much that can be done uh, virtually and digitally to can make sure you have the information that you need to make the best decision. And then you need to maximize the value of those upgrades. Okay. When you start thinking about the upgrades, you need to obviously be planning to make the most out of every opportunity. And with any chance you can incorporate a smart device into it, you're going to go actually increase uh, your operations even further. And that IBE that you're doing, that's your baseline. That's your baseline for evaluating, hey, evaluating, hey, where, where are my essentially dumb devices? Where can we implement our smart devices? And what's going to be the impact? And when you, whenever possible, don't forget this piece. <clears throat> Document the realized gain. Document the realized gain. Don't go fly past this because if you have new data, and that's helping you achieve new goals and, and operations. It's making your, your plant more efficient, more reliable, more uh, sustainable. It's able to, to give you a little bit more peace at night. Then you need to make sure that's documented because that could be a supporting case and data that you need in the future for more projects. It's all about documentation. Every, everything that gets, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So go ahead where you can start measuring it. Start managing it. 
and then put that information in front of decision makers. Help that, uh, couple that with the data that you have from your IBEs, and that's going to give you so much more fuel, if you will, to move forward with more modernization projects in the future. Because I'm going to tell you, tell you what, an IBE, it's not just a snapshot. If you're thinking of it as a snapshot, that's completely wrong, okay? It's a strategic tool that's going to help you thrive and grow in the future because your IBE is giving you data, data that you can plan with, data that you can prioritize with, and that data that's going to help you propel your operations toward that efficiency and more success in the future. So it, it can't just stop at data collection. It has to be that catalyst for transformation. It really does. And if you actually have that mindset going into it, it's going to change everything because all of a sudden you're changing your destiny, you're changing your journey, and modernization all, be all of a sudden becomes very real. And that's the great part of it. It becomes something tangible because when you have something in your hands that you can hold, say, okay, I have this. This is my map. Think about the old Pirates of the Caribbean movies and things like that. They had a map. The map showed the way. The same thing with the IBE. Don't get overwhelmed with the data. Make sure you get very specific when your vendor, when your supplier, whoever comes in, it can be overwhelming. So get very clear. Okay, that's great that we have all this data here. I need you as a vendor to show me directly, okay, where, where are the items of most impact? Where do you, what are your recommendations for areas of focus? And if you start putting some of that, that heavy lifting back on the suppliers that you work with, and you do, it's, there's a ping pong back and forth, right? Because they're not going to know your goals. You have to be very clear on that. They're not going to know your plan as well as you do. You need to, to make sure you have all that stuff defined. But working together in conjunction with a partner, the partner, it's just it's going to change everything. It's going to bring so much more clarity to what you do moving forward. So, again, Eco asks why now. It's really shifted up. So when I think about the why behind an install-based evaluation, for me, it's all about it's, – it's not just about data. It's about better decisions and, and leveraging that to make those decisions. That's the why, right? Don't, don't get trapped into this is just a spreadsheet of parts. No, no, that's not what it's about. It's so much more than a spreadsheet of parts. It's just, this is information that's going to help you grow – modernize, make those improvements in the future. So I want to know, do you like the new format of Eco SY? Is this something that brings you value? We're really trying to, to, to shift up things here. When we put information out like our, new, our, our podcast now, we want to give you some resources. We want to help you. So again, go check out the show notes. Make sure that you, you get our smart manufacturing guide. Let us know where you're located. We would love to send you some more information. We have resources that we've built specifically for IBEs, if this is something that you're interested in that you'd like to move forward with, and hey, I'm curious for my plan how this would work in this section. You have those those questions? I don't know you do. Let us know. Even if we're not in a, a, your service area, we'll at least try to point you in the right direction. But maybe, and don't just limit it to your automation lines either. Power. So much can be learned about power, particularly smart power now in the world of power. And Eco has those resources. So from automation to power controls, wherever you need the help the most. VFDs, it doesn't matter. We're, we are ready to jump in. We're ready to serve. We have the experts that are trained up on staff that, are, that at the drop of a hat, we're ready to go. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Love to know what your feedback is on the show. Again, share this out with other people. This is a very uh, specific type of information. So, hey, if you know someone out there that, that this would help, share it with them. Give us a rating. Give us a review. That type of stuff helps big time. Check us out on YouTube as well and connect with us on LinkedIn. That is where we are most active between those two platforms on YouTube and LinkedIn. So be sure to connect with Electrical Equipment Company there. Uh, connect with me on, on LinkedIn. I love to, to connect with you there, there directly. If they have questions, I will definitely do my best. If I can't answer them, I'll get you connected with the, the team of experts at Electrical Equipment Company. That can definitely get them answered for you. So there you go. Have a great day. Thank you again for taking the time with us here on Eco Ask Why. And remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. 
Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.